Well, hey guys, in today's video, we are gonna talk about dark discoloration under the arms, and I'm gonna get into the use of the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid Toner for lightening underarms. This is a really popular trend across social media, especially over on TikTok. In this video, we're gonna talk about possible reasons why you have dark discoloration under the arms, and by the end of the video, you should have a good understanding as to why you might wanna hold off on jumping on the TikTok trend of pursuing the Ordinary's Glycolic Acid Toner for your underarms. The skin under your arms is then it's delicate and it's subject to a lot of chronic friction, rubbing. This enhances penetration of potentially irritating things, coupled with the presence of moisture and sweat, which further break down the skin barrier and ultimately lead to irritation and risk for a variety of skin issues and skin infections. There are so many possible reasons to have dark discoloration under the arms. The first reason is it's totally normal. It's just part of your natural makeup to have slightly darker skin under the arms. To prevent worsening of discoloration, under the arms, it's important to use gentle skin care, apply moisturizers to lubricate the skin surface, reduce that friction that would otherwise aggravate hyperpigmentation by driving more irritation and inflammation into the skin. Moisturizing the skin can help with the skin barrier recovery in this area where you are more vulnerable to skin barrier breakdown from the presence of sweat. A barrier cream can help lubricate the skin and reduce friction. A second reason though for underarm discoloration that you may not even be aware of is seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is a chronic inflammatory skin condition and when it's on the scalp it's called dandruff but it can happen really anywhere where you have hair follicles it's primarily caused by the yeast that naturally lives on everyone's skin malassezia seborrheic dermatitis can look different in different skin tones it can appear as light pink red slightly greasy and scaly patches and paler skin, but in deeper skin, it may have a brownish grayish appearance and it can heal with either hyperpigmentation or in deeper skin tones, it often can actually heal with hypopigmentation. In order to control seborrheic dermatitis, there are a variety of topicals that can help reduce the burden of malassezia yeast and the overall inflammation of the skin, namely those that are used to treat dandruff, like an anti-dandruff shampoo with selenium sulfide or zinc pyrithione. These ingredients really help tackle that yeast you can use an anti-dandruff shampoo under the arms provided you tolerate it. Just lather the anti-dandruff shampoo under your arms, leave that lather on the skin for a few minutes, and then rinse it off. It can help control seborrheic dermatitis in that area. Seborrheic dermatitis can come and go, flare when you're stressed out, and using an anti-dandruff shampoo as a wash under the arms a few times a week can help control it and prevent recurrences. In some cases though, you may need prescription treatment to further control it with maybe a topical anti-inflammatory or a prescription topical antifungal that will tackle the yeast. Contact dermatitis is another cause of hyperpigmentation under the arms. Contact dermatitis comes in two flavors. Allergic contact dermatitis, meaning you have an allergy to something and whenever it comes in contact with your skin, you develop a rash. Or you can have irritant contact dermatitis, which essentially is just a product or ingredient or particular formulation is very irritating. And some people develop contact dermatitis that solely presents under the arms as hyperpigmentation. It's called a pigmented contact dermatitis. Some common ingredients that can be potential allergens that are frequently found in like body lotions, antiperspirants, deodorants, are gonna be fragrances. Certain preservatives may be potentially an allergen for you. And in the case of antiperspirants, some people find that aluminum salts and antiperspirants are really irritating to the skin. So one way around this is to take a break from any sort of skincare or cosmetics that you have been using under the arms, switch to fragrance-free formulas to see if that makes a difference. Instead of using deodorants, which are essentially fragrance in a stick, or antiperspirants, which help reduce sweat, but you know you may be irritated from the aluminum salts, instead of using those things to control body odor, another option is to use a benzoyl peroxide wash under the arms um, in the shower, just lather it there, let it sit on the skin for a few minutes and then rinse it off. This helps cut down on the bacteria that otherwise break down sweat and lead to body odor. Have you ever heard of lichen planus? There's a subtype of lichen planus called inverse lichen planus where it affects the skin folds under the arms. Lichen planus is a skin condition characterized by hyperpigmented, almost purplish little thin spots that have a lacy overlying scale to them. Lichen planus characteristically is mildly itchy. In some cases, lichen planus spontaneously resolves, but in other cases it requires specific medications because it's a condition where basically the immune system comes in and kind of chews up the boundaries between the epidermis and the dermis and leads to this characteristic rash. Psoriasis can also occur in the skin folds. It's called inverse psoriasis. 21 to 30 percent of people who have psoriasis will have psoriasis in the skin folds. The skin lesions of psoriasis 
process are typically very well defined and they can be reddish to light pink or brownish gray in appearance depending on your overall skin tone. Now psoriasis elsewhere on the body typically has a very characteristic thick scale, but in the skin folds due to the moisture that scale is not obvious. Inverse psoriasis can be triggered by getting sick, getting run down, stress, viral illness, certain medications. Sometimes the excessive sweat and moisture causes a lot of irritation or friction there. And psoriasis is a skin condition that exhibits something known as the isomorphic response or Kebner response. So anytime you have irritation, friction, chronic rubbing in an area, it can elicit more psoriasis. And the underarm area can be particularly problematic for many people with psoriasis. There are a variety of different treatments for psoriasis and going into all the different treatments is beyond the scope of today's video. One thing that's important to know about psoriasis, it's not just a skin condition. It is a whole body condition that has skin findings. People who have psoriasis are at an increased risk for heart disease and other metabolic health problems. And patients who have psoriasis also can go on to develop a very debilitating arthritis. So you certainly don't want to delay the diagnosis of psoriasis. I mentioned that the nature of the skin under the arms is such that it makes it sometimes more of a favorable environment for skin infections. Ringworm is relatively common under the arms uh, caused by a fungus called a dermatophyte and the rash of ringworm appears as a large round oval reddish brown to grayish uh, plaque thick raised spot and it has a very scaly and red border and it can be pretty itchy. Ringworm on the body can be treated with a topical antifungal cream like terbenafine brand name Lamisil. Uh, in some cases the fungus may be resistant to that and in some cases it may require oral medication to treat the fungus. But you definitely do not want to delay a diagnosis of ringworm because it can spread to other body sites. It can also spread to other people that you have close contact with, and it can make its way down into the hair follicle and cause a deeper skin infection. Granular perikeratosis, that is a mouthful. This is a condition that tends to affect middle-aged women, although it can impact anyone. It's thought to be triggered actually by the presence of benzalkonium chloride, a uh, antimicrobial found in a lot of antibacterial soaps, hand washes. Granular perikeratosis, you have these red or brown brownish areas of discoloration that are very, very flaky. And as it resolves, it, the skin there peels off. It may be related to friction or the occlusion or the presence of sweat. There are a variety of anti-inflammatory treatments that can target this. Under the arms, you have hair follicles. Where you have hair follicles, you have sweat trapping, you have a lot of friction, you have a lot of moisture. Uh, that allows for things to get down into the hair follicle and cause inflammation around the hair follicle, which is known as folliculitis. We already talked about how ringworm can sneak its way down into the hair follicle and cause basically a type of folliculitis that requires more extensive treatment. But more commonly, bacteria make their way down there, namely Staphylococcus bacteria, and create little pus bumps. The skin overlying that can be dark and discolored. And if it gets down deep enough, it can cause a full-on boil that's referred to as a furuncle. Folliculitis may require topical or oral antibiotics to clear up or antimicrobials, depending on the type of bacteria that has caused the problem. Some bacteria like to crop up on the surface of the skin under the arms and in other skin folds. And one little bacteria that can cause a skin problem that is very uncomfortable under the arms is Carinibacterium minutissimum. This causes a condition called erythrasma. Erythrasma, you have well-defined pink or brown patches under the arms. It can also happen in other areas of skin folds, including between the toes. This condition is a lot more common in warm, humid, tropical climates. It's also more of an issue in people who are overweight. The bacteria that causes this exhibits a unique property, uh, wherein if you take what's called a woods lamp and you turn off the lights, you turn on the woods lamp, uh, Karani bacterium will fluoresce coral red. That's one way to tell if that's what's going on. This condition is treated with uh, topical antimicrobials like benzoyl peroxide. Some cases may require a topical or even an oral antibiotic, depending on how extensive. Then you have good old post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Basically, any skin condition can heal with a dark mark. This is especially true in people who have deep skin tone. This can happen after folliculitis. It can happen after a contact dermatitis. When it comes to clearing up post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, the key is to determine and treat the underlying cause. Because so long as that inflammatory process is going on, it's going to drive persistent and more stubborn hyperpigmentation that's going to linger. So treating the root cause is key. Once the root cause is treated, controlled, and no longer an issue, the hyperpigmentation 
collection will still be there, but with time it can fade. How long it takes to fade is going to depend on how extensive the initial inflammatory event was, like how inflamed your skin was, and how long that condition was going on untreated and uncontrolled. That is why it is so important to tackle this early on, get an accurate diagnosis, because a delay in diagnosis makes the dark discoloration more of a problem for you. One of the more common contributing factors to persistent darkness under the arms is actually related to how you remove hair under your arms. For example, shaving, you can develop razor burn, irritation, ingrown hairs that lead to hyperpigmentation, especially if you have a deeper skin tone. Maybe you're allergic to nickel, as most people are. Sometimes there's nickel present in your razor, and that can actually be causing a contact dermatitis because you are allergic to the nickel. So allergic contact dermatitis, you may need to switch to a nickel-free razor. Check out my video on how to reduce ingrown hairs. I give a lot of tips and tricks on shaving and hair removal there to prevent irritation, to prevent ingrown hairs that ultimately could lead you down the path of more stubborn darkness under the arms. Maybe you've tried waxing. I mean, that can be pretty irritating to the underarms as well. Not to say it's off limits, but a lot of people develop too much irritation from that. So if you've tried a lot of different techniques to remove the hair under your arms, you're still getting a lot of irritation, you're still having persistent dark discoloration, you have a few options. You know, you can take a break from hair removal and just let the hair grow out. Sometimes that gives the skin a chance to recover and heal the hyperpigmentation. You can kind of start from scratch again at a later time with hair removal. The other option is laser hair removal to cut down on hair in that area and hair growth. That certainly can cut down on the needs for hair removal and help with clearing up the hyperpigmentation. Now, what about an at-home hair removal device? Those can certainly help slow down the rate of hair regrowth, making it so that you have to remove hair less frequently, but be cautious because many of the at-home hair removal devices, depending on your skin tone, they may put you at risk actually for a burn for hyperpigmentation, which is what you are trying to avoid in the first place. We've talked a lot about skin infections under the arm. We can't miss one of the more common skin infections that happens there, candida yeast. This is different from the yeast that causes seborrheic dermatitis, candida yeast. It can make its way onto our skin and it loves skin folds, not just under the arms, but under the breasts and the groin area. Underarm rash due to candida yeast typically is bright pink or brown in appearance, depending on your background skin tone. Uh, it's moist. And at the edge of the rash, there are these little bumps filled with pus. It's itchy and it has this overlying white, creamy, peely stuff flaking off. That's characteristic of a candida intertrigo. Intertrigo is just a fancy medical term for rash in the skin folds. Treating a candida yeast infection though, it's going to require certain topical antifungals or in some cases, depending on how extensive oral antifungals. If you are prone to recurrences of candida yeast, even after treatment, using a barrier cream in these areas to help lubricate the skin and cut down on skin friction. It can help uh, reduce breakdown of the skin that makes it more hospitable for candida yeast colonization. And a barrier cream also can help protect the skin from candida getting in there and setting up shop. Check out my video as a side note on how to use barrier creams. We talk all about this in that video. And last but certainly not least, it's important to talk about a condition that frequently happens under the arms but can happen elsewhere on the body called acanthosis nigricans. This isn't actually hyperpigmentation but rather a type of skin thickening that is related to insulin resistance. So if you have this, it's, it's really important to show your doctor because if they identify that that is what it is, you know, they can go screen you for insulin resistance diabetes. So it's a very important thing to make sure you don't have if you're dealing with dark discoloration under the arms and you're not, you know, you haven't been told what it is. That's definitely something to bring to the attention of your healthcare provider. Uh, when it comes to acanthosis nigricans, you know, addressing the underlying uh, blood glucose, the blood sugars, the insulin resistance is key because insulin-like growth factor is a hormone that is elevated. Elevated. Elevation and in insulin-like growth factor, it drives proliferation of the skin cells and it leads to the appearance of dark, thick, velvety discoloration. It can happen on the sides of the face, the backs of the hands, the back of the neck, the sides of the neck, anywhere, honestly, on the skin, but it is pretty common under the arms. So those are just some common reasons for discoloration under the arms. Quite a few different possibilities there, each with their own specific path to treatment. So should you use glycolic acid toner to lighten the skin under the arms. I would say be 
cautious. First of all, you want to know exactly what it is that you are treating. We just covered a lot of things that can lead to discoloration. The majority of these, glycolic acid is not even going to touch. It's not going to address the problem. And in many cases, it can actually make the problem much worse. So getting an accurate diagnosis of why you have dark discoloration under the arms is so important. I mean, again, if you have ringworm there, putting off diagnosis can really put you at risk for spread of ringworm to elsewhere on the body, more extensive infection that requires more extensive treatments to get rid of. If you have psoriasis, that's definitely not something that you want to put off getting diagnosed because again, there are a variety of health problems that people with psoriasis need to be screened for and, and educated on. The ordinary glycolic acid toner specifically, which is what this sort of trend fat is based around. Remember, that is a product that is meant for the face. So you can run into issues using it under the arms where you have skin on skin contact, you have sweat, enhanced penetration. Glycolic acid, even on the face, can be pretty irritating, but under the arms, it's a lot more likely to cause irritation because again, skin on skin contact, moisture, sweat, and that irritation ultimately can really worsen the hyperpigmentation for you. And I know a lot of people will be like, I didn't have any problem with it. I didn't have any issue, it worked for me. But remember, what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for everyone. It doesn't make this a great option for everyone. And I have my concerns. Take home points, there are a lot of reasons why you might have dark discoloration under the arms. And I encourage you to see a board certified dermatologist to get an accurate diagnosis. Because as you can see, once you know the reason why you have dark discoloration under the arms, that makes going after treatments and solutions to improve the appearance of the underarm arms much more logical. Uh, you're not just chasing after a trend at that point, you're actually addressing the root cause. Glycolic acid is not going to address many of the root causes of underarm discoloration. And in many cases, it will worsen the darkness. Now, recently I did a video on dark elbows and dark knees, and we talk all about skincare ingredients that can help improve the appearance of that. So you're gonna wanna check that out next if you're dealing with that, it'll be on the end slate. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and sunscreen subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.